Uh, making friends was never an issue, but it made her more aware of herself, more community back home, her behavior towards others, right? I completely understand why my university, it, be, it seems like different ethnic groups stick together. Okay. Uh, and so again, you know, when we talk about uh, you know, values, norms, goals of international education, the idea that you want the person to become interculturally competent, right? more aware of themselves, I think this is very you know, reflecting you know, on that situation. And I think you know, for me too, it kind of struck a chord because I grew up uh, in Wisconsin, uh, which is, um, fairly white state, okay? Uh, I spent one year on the JET program, and that was my first year really uh, you know, living as a minority. And that really helped me when I moved to Hawaii, <laughs> to be honest, uh, because I was very much accustomed uh, to the differences, okay? The Asian differences. Uh, then some of my friend, my girlfriend at the time, really didn't enjoy Hawaii for the first couple of years, okay? She never experienced that, you know, you know, sense of being a minority, okay? And that's a very powerful experience for her, and I think it's going to serve her well uh, in the long run. On understanding Japan, right? Um, during my stay in Japan, I wanted to see as much of Japan as I can and learn as much Japanese as possible, become good friends with Japanese students, have a good reason to come back, right? Uh, this was a German student. That. Um, the language barrier is difficult to overcome as I have limited ability and was told by my tutor that language was not an important aspect to my study abroad here. That was bad advice. <laughs> okay. If you want to make friends in Japan, you know, uh, you know, again, we saw the map, okay, so we know that there's not a lot of opportunities to study Japanese, okay, uh, but at the very least, you do have to engage it. Luckily, our program does offer from introductory uh, Japanese, so mataku nashi. Uh, you can come in and start the program there. So, uh, but got bad advice. Uh, so, but she she made it out all right. Okay, and then on the future, um, there are also implications for the future. I hope this year will prove to be beneficial to my degree, thereby making me stand out in the job market. Again, we talked about you know, talent flow. Okay, uh, in the current market with so many applicants for so few jobs, one needs all the advantages available. I feel like I grew with the tasks, problems, situations that I sometimes had to face and manage, and I believe that in the future those experiences will prove advantageous to me in so many different ways. I and mean, these are the these are the things that, that you want to hear, students. And again, these were these were from the alumni. Uh, so these were the students that had reflected and reflected on that, and they, they're seeing that now. Um, so again, that's what you want to hear as someone who's in international education. Right? So, bringing us to you know what. You know, I've done uh, in our small program the strategies that we've used to engage students, right? Um, you know, first of all, I'm finding that simple things matter. Um, last year was the first year I did a Christmas party, okay? Um, and I read uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. I think you might even be able to find it on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was, but they just, they really enjoyed it. It was just so simple. It was just a simple thing to do. So I would encourage, you know, people who work here, uh, to do simple things for your students, okay, because that's what they really appreciate. I think um, practicing competent communication, what that means, you know, with your students, okay, with the partner institutions, okay, uh, you know, people back home, they, they've got to deal with the students when they come back. They, they need to know what's going on, okay, at your institution. So, you know, whether it is through a website, through Facebook, you know, but competent communication, right, it's, it's about listening, okay. It's about responding thoughtfully. It's about showing empathy, okay? And you've got to remember that, uh, that these, again, are students in a very you know, difficult time for some of them in their life. And so you need to listen, not just hear what they have to say, but listen to what they're saying. I think creating networks, you know, this society connections do matter very much. And so whether you're networking with an alumni, okay, of that university, uh, or again, particularly students who don't study abroad, Trying to figure out how to get those students connected, okay, with international students, I think a very valuable, valuable way. Providing options, uh, we do monthly walking tours of Tokyo. Um, Tokyo is, you know, um, the best place if you want academic stimulation. It's Tokyo. Um, there are so many universities there, uh, embassies, think tanks. Uh, non-governmental organizations. There are talks, academic talks, every single week. And I require students to go uh, to at least three uh, outside talks um, 
Uh, this semester we've gone to seven outside talks. Almost every week we're going to a talk. And that's just been a valuable experience. They're getting exposure not just to, you know, the experts, okay, but also the grad students who are going through that. Some of them are thinking maybe they want to go to grad school, okay. Uh, they want to be able to see. Uh, you know, what it might take to write a grad paper. So, uh, I, you know, I think Tokyo, you know, that's, that's one advantage to being a small program in Tokyo uh, because I can highlight the fact that they can be exposed to so many different uh, types of understanding and perspectives. Right? I think seeking reinforcement and reaffirmation of the theories, goals, and value of international education, particularly, as I mentioned, intercultural competence and global citizenship. I think creating stakeholders in your program. And that means, again, alumni, that means faculty, administrators, parents, um, you know, alumni uh, not just who graduated from that university, but alumni of your program as well. So, you know, trying to figure out ways they can help uh, to bring in, you know, not just finances, finances, hopefully, but again, you know, making that a value, uh, you know, for students overall. I talked about embracing perspectives and different ways of seeing. I think that's absolutely essential. Allowing for the critiques, uh, taking the praise with critical comments, that's the only way we've gotten better with our program. Uh, we, I take seriously what students say, and I think that's very important that they are, again, becoming a stakeholder in that. And I'll tell the student, hey, you know, three years ago when you came and you told me about this, well, you know what, we finally were able to change it. It took us three years to do it, but it was because you stimulated me to do it, it happened. And that student, I think, feels really good about that, so that we listen. And then they share that information with their other students, so that they know that, you know, they come to Musashi, they're not going to just be left out on their own. Okay? And again, to set us up as a different type of study abroad destination, we need to do that for students. We absolutely need to do that for students. I think uh, being proactive, improving, innovating. Okay? And then placing the focus, uh, first and foremost, on the students. Okay, so, where are we, right? We gave, I think he's got enough time to think about you know, what to do, right? These, these young boys have come up, okay, with the bird up behind, and they said, you know, please, wise one, tell us, you know, is it alive or is it dead? And, you know, the elder, the wise one, you know, knows that if he, if he says uh, that the bird is alive, the boy will simply crush the bird. Right? If he says the bird is dead, will simply release open his hands. And so he says, it shall be as you shall have. And I think that that's certainly an applicable message to international students, right? You know, these weeks in Boy Scout camp, you know, the many moons ago, you know, uh, that I went through this, Sean heard this story too, as well, the idea of it shall be as you shall have it. How this you know, can it help us offer students opportunities, you know, to overcome, okay, the isolation they might feel, to help them feel a little more part of an intimate program through opportunities and challenges. You know, putting the I, it seems kind of cheesy, I know, but, you know, it is very much, study abroad is very much a me type of experience, and we can't forget that. It's, it's, that's so important to let the student feel, okay, that it is my experience, my study abroad experience. It shall be as usual. Thank you.